Good afternoon and thanks for having us. We're APM Capital, and today we're reassessing the $15 billion strategic asset allocation of the Newfoundland and Labrador Pension Investment Board. Currently, NLPIB is troubled with the difficulty of meeting its return objective, pressure from local environmental activists to divest from oil and gas holdings, as well as pressure from the local provincial government to support a local economy. Thus, we have come up with three core recommendations. First, we recommend no divestment from existing oil and gas holdings due to significant long-term detriments involved in this approach. Second, we recommend investing directly in local green infrastructure to support a local economy and at the same time diversifying our portfolio. Third, we recommend shifting the portfolio exposure towards growth assets in the long term to achieve the required return objective. As you can see in the summary table, table below, the proposed recommendations generate significantly better absolute returns and also risk-adjusted returns compared to the existing portfolio. More importantly, our recommendations seek to strike a fine balance between meeting the fund's dual mandate as well as addressing key concerns from stakeholders. The core objectives of our recommendations include achieving the required rate of return of 7%, <clears throat> supporting the local economy, enforcing NLPIB's core ESG values, as well as addressing concerns from key stakeholders such as the provincial government, pensioners, and indigenous groups. Moving on to asset allocation, we can see that the existing portfolio to the left is allocated 45% to highly defensive bond assets, with just 21% in public equities and 26% in highly liquid direct investments. This yields an expected return of just 5.3%, significantly lower than the 7% hurdle that's required. Thus, to generate sufficient returns, we recommend shifting portfolio allocation towards more growth assets in the long term. This increases um, the proportion of growth assets from 55% in the current portfolio to 74% by 2034, which is stage three. Furthermore, whilst we intend on maintaining existing oil and gas holdings, we also recommend investing directly in local green infrastructure and local provincial bonds to support a local economy through greater employment, investments, and tax revenue. This is reflected in the increase in direct investments as seen in the table below, from 26% in the current portfolio to 42% by 2034. As seen in the summary table, summary table our recommendation successfully achieves the required rate of return with a far more attractive sharp ratio on, um, and suggesting the strength of the portfolio on a risk-adjusted basis. We have utilized a three-stage three approach to portfolio allocation, uh, each of five-year intervals, in order to ensure the practicality of our approach and preventing a radical overhaul of the portfolio in the short run. I will now pass on to Edward, who will discuss our recommendations in further detail. Thanks, Jerry. So now I'll take you through to our three recommendations. Our first recommendation is that the NLPIB do not divest away from its oil and gas holdings. Given that it is a short-term solution with severe long-term detriments, and it does not solve the fundamental environmental problems which is plaguing Newfoundland and Labrador. Now in the first scenario that uh, divestment is through a successful foreign buyer, you can see that foreign owners may further disregard environmental issues in the face of, co uh, in the face of corporate profits compared to local firms who have a higher stake in the local environment. And secondly, uh, in the alternative scenario that uh, a successful sale to a foreign buyer cannot be reached and that uh, the, the, the divestment would be through a wind down of oil and gas, this will lead to severe ramifications throughout the economy. Starting with a surge in unemployment, weakened economic growth, significant budget damage, and decreased living standards. Now, furthermore, we believe that divestment does not fulfill the dual mandate of the NLPIB, as firstly, oil and gas assets currently contribute significantly to the portfolio's returns. And, and, secondly, uh, contra uh, and secondly, if you uh, divest away, this is contradict contradicting the dual mandate uh, of local support. Now, lastly, we believe that divestment will cause significant underfunding of the NLPIB, given that majority of our members are currently employed in oil and gas related companies. And by divesting away from these companies, what we're doing is we're creating a disconnect in the funding cycle, potentially leading to net cash outflows of the fund and severe, uh, severe problems for the fund going forward. Now, moving on to our second recommendation. Uh, we recommend that the NRPIB uh, invest in green assets to alleviate the key concerns of uh, environmental uh, stakeholders. 
So uh, we acknowledge that this shift is quite considerable. So we have devised a two-staged plan to tackle this uh, by investing in green mutual funds in the short run to investing directly in local green infrastructure in the long run. So as you can see from the graph, the green investing trend has taken off in recent years and is forecasted to grow significantly uh, in the future, underpinning the performance of green assets in the short run. But crucially, in the long run, what we want the NRPIB to do is to invest locally uh, in, in green infrastructure to number one, generate fund returns to support the local economy as well as looking after the environment. Now, specifically, uh, we see that um, Newfoundland and Labrador has an untapped potential for wind energy given its favorable coastal geography and shallow waters. And we believe that given the size and influence of the NLPIB, that this is a unique advantage uh, in, in them being able to have a first move advantage in this excellent investment opportunity. Now, moving on to our third recommendation. We recommend that the current portfolio be shifted in two major ways. So firstly, we recommend that there will be a high, higher proportion of growth assets compared to the current asset mix. And secondly, uh, we believe that there should be a higher proportion of direct investments compared to indirect investments. So firstly, the current portfolio suffers from one major drawback, being that 55%, uh, oh, sorry, 45% of the current assets are allocated to bonds uh, in a world where bond yields are sub 2%, significantly decreasing the chance of the fund in meeting the investment objective. And by increasing the amount of growth assets uh, throughout the stages from stage one to three, uh, we are trending towards the peer average and may suggest an optimal level of asset allocation. Now, furthermore, we would like to invest directly in local provincial bonds from the Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as in local green infrastructure to really, uh, to really uh, help the economy and local support. Thanks, Ed. So I'm um, balancing key stakeholder uh, concerns at the core of our recommendation, and we want to make sure that the outcomes are better than what they're at right now. So starting off with the government, taxpayers, and the oil and gas union, a no-divestment decision will mean that NLPIB can continue to support the economy and achieve its due mandate because oil and gas is still a big part of the economy. Secondly, in terms of for indigenous groups and environmental activists, by having a clear asset allocation um, towards green assets in the long run, we're showing that we're committed to preserving the environment as well as supporting the economy in the long run. And of course, we cannot forget our pensioners who require our, us as asset managers to achieve the required rate of return. And by going more towards growth and direct assets, we can continue to grow their wealth. So um, in terms of how we constructed our portfolio, we used to uh, utilize uh, long-term forward-looking uh, capital market assumptions from reputable sources such as BlackRock and JP Morgan. And we combine all of these into a mean variance optimizer. So um, the, one of the most important things over here is that we want to make sure that asset weights for each asset class do not differ by more than 50% at each stage. This is because a radical overhaul of the portfolio can be damaging to the fund, and we want to make sure that it is done in a practical and gradual manner. So um, in terms of this, our implementation timeline, and we expect to execute these three-part recommendations in, uh, concurrently across stage of 2024, 2029, and 2034. And there are two key aspects of T. Firstly, is that we want to utilize the in-house investment team that NLPIB has to select quality direct investments that go into these portfolios. Secondly, we're by creating stages and evaluation points, we're effectively embedding real options into our implementation timeline, such that NLPIP can always adjust and adapt its plan according to the market. And this is because in the market that's always changing, a dynamic plan is always better than a static plan. So we do recognize that there are risks that come through our recommendation, and we've devised mitigation strategies for these. One of the key ones over here is that by uh, going towards more direct assets, you are going to make your portfolio more uh, illiquid. However, we believe that uh, as a NLPIB is a long-term asset holder. At the same time, we can always monitor the liquid asset to total assets ratio such that they're at an acceptable level. Ultimately, balancing key stakeholder concern is what we're all about. And we believe that NLPIB can really lead all the stakeholders towards a better future. Thank you very much.